What's up, everybody? It's Soren Baker here on Unique Access Entertainment. As always, please hit that subscribe button. It's right down there, and it's free. That enables us to keep coming to y'all as often as possible with as many interviews as possible. So please hit that subscribe button, like our content, share it, talk about it, be about it, each one, teach one. We appreciate your support in getting us this far. And while you're there, please join. That helps us behind the scenes on many different levels and ways and helps me slide a little extra to my friends to help us with the channel. So please do that as well. Make sure to watch a few, get us in your algorithms, keep it moving. Now today, we have the honor and the privilege of being joined by my friend, Big Trey D. Thank you for coming nope, through, yep. sir. For sure, for sure. Yo, guy, what's up, Soren Baker, man? We've been uh, we've been pushing this this culture a long time, man, and uh, glad to see rewards is coming up for us both. You know, absolutely, man. You got a lot going on, including the new project, Malice. Everybody can pick that up, listen to it, buy it, download it, stream it. However you guys listen and support your music, I highly recommend it. Supreme Circle Music Group is in full effect. So before we get to Malice, break down for people that don't know, what is the Supreme Circle Music Group and what does that mean to you? Supreme Circle Music Group is the record label that I represent that was formed upon my release uh, after a 10 and a half year bid in state prison in 2014, I came home and my wife and I, along with a friend of hers, uh, Shondell Rose, AKA Jazzy D and, um, a friend of mine, uh, Gerald Taylor, AKA Stein, you know, Stein me here, uh, we call him Stein, you know, he's a, and it's just not cause he's a, idiot because you know you you'll stumble trying to keep up with him he's very sharp he's a um he's a great asset to the team as well as jazzy and my wife so we decided that we would remain independent through everything that was going on with the music industry and things like that and people was trying to get put on and you know they don't pay as much um attention and uh they don't put as much effort behind West Coast music, it seems, as they do music from back east and in the south and Midwest. So, you know, we just know we all have the uh, capacity and capabilities and the grind to propel ourselves to where we need to be within the game. So we've been locked in for the last nine years and we released a few projects and steady on the mash. Interesting point, too. I'm curious because this is something I've always wrestled with and not fully understood, even though I have my own theories and seen it in practice. Right. Why does the West Coast have such a hard time getting respect? Because on the one hand, it's, I would argue, the most popular form of rap and has been since the 80s, really starting with Ice-T really kicked it off, but really starting with Easy Does It and Straight Outta Compton. But then, you know, Dre and everything he did, Snoop, everything he did. I mean, it's like layers. Right, so, right. And, you know, as I know, and you helped me out a lot with the history of gangster rap, you got Ice-T, you got Snoop Dogg, you got Ice Cube, and you got Dre. So right. how how and why is it still like the West Coast is, eh? Like why? I, I've never understood stood that even though I have my own theories? Well, I, I think for one, we get marginalized due to the content of our music. And as appealing and attractive as it is to the entire globe, it seems that the restrictions of, you know, um, I guess, I guess, they say it leads to violence, you know, so the restrictions on the accessibility and the availability of the kind of music that we make is stifled, you know, just just based on, we, you know, you don't, you have to pretty much propel your own movement. Like I was telling you, we're doing with Supreme Circle Music Group, you know, because they won't push you like they push a Drake. They won't push you like they push a Nas, you know? They won't push you like they push, you know, whoever is dominating, you know, the pop rap charts at whatever time. So you kind of had to like 
mash through it and find yourself a situation that will allow you to be able to, you know, uh, disseminate your music on a broad scale because it's, it's, it's not, it's not widely welcomed by the industry, but it's widely appreciated and sought by the masses. So it's a dichotomy that you can't, you know, it's, 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 it's nuts. You know what I mean? When you, when you try to figure it out. So, you know, you just got to put your foot down and mash, man, and deliver to your fan base and, and it'll keep expanding and you just stay mashing. That's and that's what you, you've done again, yet again with Malice. So congratulations on that. Uh, right on. You got the Malice intro, the song Malice, and the album title Malice. So why why so much Malice, and what did that mean for you at this point and on this project? Well, initially, I wanted to call the album Violence. But you can't promote violence on a lot of platforms. You know, in the movies, it's fine. But in hip-hop, you know, it's a different story. So it's that funny uh, double standard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I, you know, one of my friends called it, you know, my homeboy Fumby, he called it while I was doing the interview with him. He's like, well, I'm going to have to do one with the cover and one without the cover because, you know, you can't promote violence. And I was like, if you can't promote violence, I won't even be able to promote my album so you know, there's a little so, bit of violence depicted on there a little just a little <laughs> so i had to change it to malice which is probably as close to violence as you'll get without actually using the word itself and it was just it was just ironic that i already had a song for the album called malice you know and um it just it just it just floated together. That's one of my favorite songs on the album too. That's why I kicked it off with it. I like the energy that you know I'm saying that I delivered on there. Yeah. And speaking of energy on there, even before the first verse kicks in, you're saying expect a whole lot of turbulence. So I would I would uh say that you bring a lot of turbulence to almost everything you do musically. So wow. how and why has that been such a a theme? Because even when you're not even when you're just braggadocio or non-street tales, it's still mm -hmm. got that element to it. Why is that just pervasive with what you work on? That's who I am. I embrace who I am. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, you know, and I, I have no problem expressing that. You know, it, it sets me apart from the next artist, you know, from the next person, you know. And um, as an individual, sometimes... You know, you want to have the mass appeal and, you know, make the song for, you know, the people, make the song for the club, make the song for, you know, and it's like this time around, I was like, fuck all that. You know, this this for my people. You know, what I mean, this this for my real fan base, this for everybody who, you know, ride with me for who I am, you know, to stay down with me all these years from 21 Jump Street, you know, and it's like. Let me show y'all. And a lot of people always put me in the underrated category as well, you know. So I just wanted to get him some weight, you know, to, to you know, take that and play, put this next to your favorite artist shit. Yeah, let me, let's go song. Let's go song for song, you know. Well, I, I don't want to jump around Malice too much, but I think on Heavy, one of my favorite things you say is I drop scriptures. And the thing from talking to you and getting to know you now for over the decades and stuff but uh your posts on instagram people should check those out if you don't follow the general on instagram but the thing is that you've always done and i think you've been doing it even more even maybe more and more but you're dropping like these super life lessons in the midst of the super gangsterism like the ice t's did like the ice cubes the best artists mm. Mm. and i think I think that that's, in my opinion, it's evolved. I think you're doing it more often. So do you realize you're doing it more or is that just your personal growth and evolution? Or are you trying to like, oh, let me, I didn't uh, drop this little gem in here. Let me go back. Like, how does that work for you? Mm, I, I think it's now, you know, growing a little older, you know, um, I have to drop some jewels within the music or, you know, 
it'll be dra it'll be a uh, garbage, you know, it'll be trash. It'll be like, you know, it'll be like, damn, how how many songs is there? And I didn't get nothing out of nothing, you know what I mean? Even if it's just a lesson from something that I learned. You you did where I'm coming from. So, you know, I I um I know God allowed me to live this long and get all this experience to be able to disseminate it in more than just music. You know, it's like my life is like a testimony and, and I see it like that. I know I survived a lot of things. I survived shooting, stabbings, prison, you know, just uh, the gamut of pretty much everything you go through coming from the inner city. And, you know, I I survived with 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 an ironclad reputation. You know, my head up. I don't got no bad attachments to my name, and you know that's a I guess that's a source of I wouldn't call it pride, but satisfaction. You know, uh, self satisfaction with me to know that I can go anywhere in any environment, and you know. I can stand on who I am without worrying about who might have heard this or, you know, who might still be mad about this or whatever. It might be people mad about shit I did, but that's going to come with the territory. It, it, it was probably something that they had coming or something I just felt like giving them. So if it make it back to me through karma or whatever, I got that coming. But I mean, you know, going to stand on my, my resume as a man, as a G, you know, and as a as a dope artist, you know, I I don't care who in the studio, I don't care what's going on. If I'm invited to participate on something, I feel like I can, you know, I can um I can adapt and express myself well enough to stand alongside anybody with a microphone. I would agree. And I think on malice, to your point, you talk about how your mind's quite different, you attribute it to prison and a lifetime of crippling. And right there, that's the type of thing that I think the best street reporting, hardcore music, gangster rap, whatever people want to say, it's not, it's not the glorification, it's the understanding of it. And I think the perspective is really, even though Malice is full of Malice, there's also this, this other layer to the whole project, which I really uh, enjoyed and appreciated. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. I'm glad you did. Cause you know, man, you boy, I don't know if it's a dope hip hop album you ever missed. So for you to, you know, for you to like, you know, put it on that level, man, I'm I'm really humbled and honored. Seriously, you know, because uh, you know, when I when I finished it, when I sequenced it, when I thought of the title, like halfway through it, like I said, I was going with violence, and it was just like not just being violent, but the 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 whole um the the mindset of violence, what propels violence, what's the result of violence, you know, uh what leads what leads to even the initiation of you know malice, you know, slash violence is like it's a lot of things that trigger those different things and it, it, that triggers that it's a lot of different things that trigger it. So I wasn't just trying to be braggadocious or, or glorify violence per se. I was just speaking of it from someone who's lived and dealt with it most of my life from 10, 11 years old. You know, I, I you know, I've been to, juvenile placements, juvenile camps, juvenile halls, youth authority, county jails, prison. So, you know, that was always a a, a possibility of you you know of of jumping off at any given time. So, your mind had to always be in combat mode. So, I think I think it was just it just came to be something that you know I felt would uh would just resonate with, with with my fan base because they know where I come from they know they know it's authentically me they know it's not me trying to you know uh take on a character or you know something to you know uh uh get some record sales or whatever it's just just like no that's I 
I know about this dude. Or I heard about this dude. This is this is this is how he get down, you know. So I, you know, I'm glad it was it's been well received. A lot of people saying it's my best work, and I thought so. Oh, my solo as a solo oh. project. Yeah. I, I thought so. When it was completed and I sequenced it, I was like, yeah, I got to get this out. <laughs> No, it, it's very good for people that haven't yet. Please listen to Malice uh, as you as you finish watching this interview, or pause and go listen.